Oh, g'day. You're here. How are you? I was going to catch up with you later. Sorry, just been out for a run. So, I'm not really dressed for this, am I? I want to talk to you about the iCast 2019 show today, do a bit of a preview for you, but um, I might just change clothes before we do that. Right, that's better. iCast 2019 is about 37 days, 6 hours and 9 minutes to go before the biggest fishing show on the planet starts in Orlando, Florida at the Orange County Convention Center. <clears throat> Last year's show was, there were some huge things that come out of it. Let's go and take a look. From that we'll go over the 25 winners of each category and then we're going to look into my crystal ball the fishing crystal ball and see what's going to come in the next 12 months so in a month's time we're going to get a, a bit of a vision of the next 12 months what we can see fishing gear related I've got some really good ideas of what I think is going to happen um, some things I'd like to happen uh, but yeah let's check it out and let's go take a look Right, yeah, let's take a look at the 2018 winners of the categories. Um, no particular order, there's 25 categories, just going to run through them. I'll chuck up an image of uh, the item and we'll go through them and then we'll move on to my thoughts on what we, what's coming this year. Uh, best of boating accessories last year was won by Min Coda, the Ultrax Mega image. Um, won't be too many of you that don't know that one. That's a fantastic bit of kit. Incorporated the transducer into the Minn Kota electric motor at the front. One piece unit, save bolting things on. So that was a great bit of kit and did really well from it. Uh, Hummingbirds one boat network along with Minn Kota. So it made things a whole lot, lot simpler. And they, I'm sure they thought they were gonna go pretty close to winning. Uh, best of Boats of Watercraft, uh, was the, the winner was a 360 Angler Jackson Kayak. Um, <clears throat> best of Eyewear was a Costa Boffin. I believe that's the one that the frames are made out of uh, recycled fishing nets, I believe, which is a great, Costa's done some great things in, in regards to environmental sides of things of fishing, which is very important for our kids and our future. Uh, best of Footwear. I think this was the, probably the one from watching all the stuff the Tackle Warehouse did last year. Um, I think all the footage, because you can't get in, they don't really do a thing. Um, this is probably the one that I, th I think was just a little bit silly. Um, it was the River's Edge products and it was the fish handles. So remember the old on the wall fishing that we used to sing the song, the old bass? Um, <clears throat> well basically they just turned that into a pair of thongs. Uh, or sandals, or jandals, depending where you're from. Uh, in Australia, we call them thongs. So yeah, it was probably the, not the most exciting of the winners. I think there were some other really good footwear from <coughs> uh, Huck and Gill and a few others that brought out some really good stuff. And I think the shoes this year, there's been some really good ones. Uh, Gill's brought out some really good stuff, so is Huck. Huck brought out some really nice uh, sneaker style, style shoes this year, so yeah. Um, next is the best of giftware. Number six brands, the Cauldron Coffee. So I think this is just a portable coffee device so you could grind and uh, hot water, held hot water, had a grinder in it so you could grind your beans, mix your coffee on there. I'm sure if Peter McKinnon ever watches this, that he'd be, be something that he would love. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so not a bad thing, really good for the fishermen. Cold, especially in the cold, you've got 
these guys in the States get definitely cold than us and he's had a really cold winter, so I'm sure something like the coffee, the cold and coffee would have been fantastic. Best of lifestyle apparel. Um, so, and I think there's some good stuff in this market last year. Uh, there's some tough ones. My favorite was the Jason Christie hooded uh, long sleeve shirt. Unfortunately, that didn't come out till I think February this year before it got released. I was really waiting, had a, had a zipper here, much like a zipper here on, on our team shirt, so I got custom made. Had a zipper there, had a hoodie with the face mask built in. Um, it was a really nice kit, but it did take a long time before it actually got released in the market, which I was a little bit disappointed. But the winner was the AFCO Hexatron Performance Fleece. This one right here. The best of tech apparel was the Hydronaut Heavy Duty Waterproof System. This bad boy here, I think we can all agree there's some tough ones there. Gill's got some great stuff. AFCO's done amazing here. <coughs> And I, after seeing a few of the pro guys in a couple of tournaments, they had some really terrible weather. And I think without something like this on, I think I would have turned the boat around and gone back to the ramp. So definitely something required. Um, it's not a cheap investment, but three or 400 bucks to know you're gonna be bone dry and you can go fishing, whatever, come in hail, snow, rain, whatever. I think that's definitely worth it. So that was a good choice. Best of, tech, uh, best of electronics, the Garmin Panoptics Live Scope System. Um, Hummingbird was huge last year, the Mega Down image, um, obviously the <coughs> in built into the, the encoder was a huge deal. Uh, Lawrence come out with HDS uh, Live, they had sort of announced that. Um, and then Garmin come along with this Panoptics Live Scope and <coughs> it has not stopped for 12 months. Even people that have not talked about Garmin, I've looked at it. Um, my brother-in-law's got a Garmin on here, we've got to put the transducer on his boat. It is amazing. And Lawrence has come out and released the, uh, their live, they're announcing that as well. So they've got a version similar to that coming out. They're about, probably, I guess, say eight, nine months behind Garmin and Honeymoon, nothing is yet. And we'll talk more later about that. So that was the Garmin Pen Optics Live Scope. This was huge, absolutely huge. And if you haven't seen what it can do, just jump on YouTube and Google it um, and search for it. You'll find it. It is an amazing bit of technology. And I think this, I've got some ideas on where that's going to go as well this year. <coughs> Best of fish accessories. This is a bit of a strange one. Uh, this is the Yeti Panga backpack, 28 litre, just a small waterproof backpack, which is fantastic. Um, especially for guys that own boats, young kids. If you're doing traveling, you want to keep your stuff dry, your phones, your headphones, um, wallets, keys, stuff like that for your car. Water, have something waterproof you can just chuck on your back for a little bit of a day journey if you're just cruising up a creek, I think it's great. Something like this is definitely really good. Best of fly fishing accessories. Now this is a bit strange, I, looking through this, I thought it was strange, fly fishing accessories, you know, I, I've, I'm not a fly fisherman myself, but I wouldn't imagine a fly fisherman is really concerned with taking a Yeti Tundra Hall 40 litre Esky or cooler uh, on wheels. It's a fantastic product, don't get me wrong, I just find it strange to look at boating into the fly fishing accessories. It's almost as if they've gone, well, yeah, this is a really great item, but where are we gonna put it? Well, we don't have much in this segment, we'll just give that one. So it was a bit, I thought I cast sort of, that was a little bit weird, that one. But a fantastic item, the Yeti products are just fantastic. They're flying off the shelves um, in Australia. They go, they sell out, they go out of stock. I know Fishing Outdoor World, one of our sponsor, uh, sponsors, they're constantly selling out of the Yeti products and they're fantastic, they do a great job and everyone loves them so there's nothing wrong with the products, it's just strange that it wins that segment, I thought it was strange. Um, best of fishing line, Power Pro Super Slick V2. <clears throat> I think it uh, got released early January on Tackle Warehouse's site. Um, it's not in Australia yet. I was going to buy some when I did my list and I thought, no, no, I'll have it before the thing. And for some reason, Power Pro, it's not in Australia. This is like, Power Pro is what I use anyway. Uh, it's a fantastic line, the old one. This is the better one. 
I really wanted to get it, so I was a little bit disappointed it's taken nine months and it's still not in Australia, available in Australia, which is pretty average, I think, to get a product released for something so important as this. Um, a great product, uh, from what I've heard, it does a really good job. Um, PowerPro has always been synonymous with uh, great abrasion resistance and strength. Uh, on the Barra, Barra Mundi, they're known to snap line pretty quick. So PowerPro is a fantastic item. So I'm really keen to see what that is like, hopefully in the next few months or uh, the next 12 months. Best of kids tackle was anything possible. Kids caster, dude perfect. <coughs> um, yeah, I'm not too familiar with that that item, but um, yes, that was that winner. Something great for the kids. And I think this is a segment that needs to grow. Uh, kids are coming up and we're gonna see gaming with the new Sims, Fishing Sims World game going pro this year. Um, so the, I think fishing's really targeting the kids to get the kids on board. So this segment here for kids, I think that's something that all the manufacturers can really focus on. And it's great to have a little casting thing, but I think in the, ne in the ne over the coming years, you're gonna see this segment get a little bit more serious and there's gonna be some real competition in there. Uh, best of tackle management, the tack logic, Little lock, little locker. <clears throat> there was some really good stuff tackle wise. Um, Bass Mafia had some good things coming out in regards to the bags, the soft plastic bags and stuff, which are fantastic. They're money bags. I've got a, I've got a few of them. They're really, really good item, really nice and strong. Um, but I don't think anyone was going to ever beat the <coughs> little lock, the box, the little locker. Um, something collapsible that can ship easy, which is fantastic freight-wise for the manufacturer and for the retail stores. Uh, saves the people buying it, the freight, and then having your little locks kits that can just slide in and you can take it as one unit. It was a good design. Um, yeah, really good item. I'm sure a fair few of you have already got one of that. Um, I've tried the little locks. They're a great box. Um, we got a heap of, pretty much a heap of everything to try it all out and it did well. Um, it does, by having it stuck down, it does minimise how much you can fit into the box, so you do need a lot more of it. So that was the only downside I had with that one. Uh, best of terminal tackle, the Rapala VMC Neko skirt. So it's basically just a, this, you can see this is the skirt uh, that you can place over your hooks um, when you're making up any of your rigging. Um, pretty much most manufacturers have got them. This is a quality item, a good silicon based one, I believe. <coughs> or latex based one, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, it was a really good item, and yeah, I think this year you'll probably see a little bit more in that area, and it's gonna be a bit more competition. Um, best, best of freshwater hard lure, the Western Freddy the Frog. Um, we don't use a lot of frogs in Australia that I've ever seen. Um, I got one to try this year and I flicked it around, unfortunately, as you've seen in our, a few of their videos, I'm sure you'll watch, um, the fish went biting on anything, so I did try it and I, yeah, great, great idea and you can get that surface action, definitely worth a crack. Um, and it, I'm sure they go really well over in the States, there's a lot of frog in there and those bass do like that surface attack. <clears throat> so yeah, the best of saltwater hard lure was 1315 with the octopi, this little lady, um, good looking little lure, um, I'm sure they definitely catch fish off the, off the, uh, out of the ocean. Best of fresh, freshwater soft lure, uh, live target hollow body crawfish, wow, oh, I was blown away myself when I seen this, uh, the Daly River, uh, have a little species of a larger thing of marin or it's called a cherubin in the territory. Um, they grow to about yay big. Um, that little crawfish is very similar looking but a smaller version. I thought this would be perfect. Um, it took them a while to get out. I think January or early February I got the email to say that they'd been ordered and on their way. Um, when I got them, took them up to Darwin and the boys absolutely loved them and everything was right, the weight of it looked so good. I threw it in a hundred snags. Unlucky I didn't get anything, but I didn't get anything on anything else either. So <clears throat> I don't think the lure is the problem. I think if the fish are on, they're gonna absolutely love them. It's a fantastic lure, 
Well, I tell you, did a great job with that. And also for the best saltwater soft lure was the Live Target Fleen Shrimp. Again, Live Target really had a big year last year, um, really stepped up their game, and the items they were bringing out were just just had a really good look, just very realistic. And I think that's the way it's going to sort of go in the future. And we'll talk more about that with the upcoming stuff in the crystal ball. Uh, best of fly reel was the Siegler Reels MF fly reel. As I said before, I'm not a fly fisherman man, but uh, this does look pretty good, and I'm sure it obviously deserved what it, it got. Obviously, a good reel. Best of the freshwater reels, Shimano Corrado, Corrado DC. Well, the Corrado DC blew everything out of the water last year. It was it got released and just went through the roof in the States and here in Australia. Absolutely really nice reel. The DC, um, it's great for all ages. Great, great when you get those windy conditions or you're <clears throat> throwing a light lure or somewhere like that where that break can come in and help. Um, I don't have one, I went up another level. I went to the Cattle Cutter DC, but we'll talk more about that. Uh, best of the saltwater reel, Shimano Takoda 500 level wine. They're great. Shimano's always had great offshore reels. Dakota, I've seen them, I've used them. They're a great reel. This looks fantastic, and I'm sure it works a treat, and it'll be a great offshore reel. I don't think there'll be any problems with that. Best of rod and reel combo was the Luz Custom Black LFS combo. We don't get many Luz in Australia. I haven't seen many in the shops or anything. Um, obviously huge in the States, and I'm sure that you're probably going to think about coming to Australia a little bit more. I, as I said, I haven't, you don't see much, you don't hear much here in Australia. Um, so they're obviously a fairly decent package. Um, so I'm sure that was a quality bit of gift and it's in the right price range, a little bit cheaper than your Shimano's and Dialers. Uh, best of fly rod, St. Croix Mojo Trout. Um, St. Croix, well known brand. Uh, they had a really good year. Not only did they get the fly rod, which I'm sure is a fantastic rod, um, they also won the best freshwater rod with a legend glass. So that's a glass fiber combo. I think it's all glass, or is it a combination? I think that one's all glass, so it's got a little bit of flexibility for the freshwater. Fantastic bit of gear. Uh, St. Croix, well known, known for quality, so I don't think you'd have any problems with those two rods. And then they went for the triple, St. Croix. Best of the saltwater rod, St. Croix Mojo Yak. Um, so that one was designed a little bit short of the stub, uh, as you can see, and that was more designed for the kayak fishermen, which is brilliant. You know, they, they're smart enough to know that the kayak fishing is getting growing in America, and it's definitely growing here in Australia. Um, I think there's also a brim series for the kayaks here in Australia. Um, so the kayak's becoming a big business. It's a great way to start to get into fishing, especially for young kids. Boats are an expensive item, kayaks, something that anyone can sort of get in and buy with a couple of thousand bucks um, and you can set it up how you want it all the way up to some big dollar money. But uh, yeah, that was great to see St. Croix special lot, help them heap these guys out so they've got something that's good for them. So yeah, that was really good. And then last but not least, the best of the show. Now out of those 25 items, as I said to you, I think the main one that really, really rocked everyone's socks um, was the Garmin Livescope. I mean, <clears throat> something that you can face forward and you've got a, say, a 30 to 40 degree angle um, with this unit, and you can see the fish swimming in front. So you can basically line your boat up on a snag or a bed or a grass bed, and you can see the fish swim basically straight past you. You see, know exactly where they are, and you can see your lure going down swimming in the water in real time is just amazing and from their first version to the second version last year the clarity's picked up they've got a high definition version now um, very interesting to see what, what their next step is with that but we'll talk about that more in a little bit right yeah so that's the that was basically 2018 winners um, let's go back to the office and we'll talk about the 2019 and what we hope to, what we expect to see and what we hope to see. Okey doke, 2019, what's gonna come? We've got a little over 
37 days to uh, until it all happens. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait to see it. Um, I had a ball looking at all the new stuff coming out for the, this year. Uh, in last year's iCast, it's a fantastic show. The Lawrence Trolley Motor. If you haven't seen my uh, video on the Lawrence Trolley Motor, shoot over and check it out after this one. Um, bit of talk. We've got a photo of the. Got some photos that were leaked onto the internet about the prototype. Um, one of my subscribers has also put a link. Go down through the comments. He's put a link through. Uh, there's a video. One of the guys has seen the pro. One of the pro guys. Their prototype on the water on a boat. So some really really good there. I appreciate that to the the guys that did that for us. They found it. Um, it's a. <clears throat> It's a, it's a huge thing for Lawrence. Uh, Hummingbird and Coda, obviously the one company. Um, they've got the, they talk a lot about the one boat network. So Lawrence coming out with the trolley motor. I believe they own a fair bit of motor guide and they've been partnered with motor guide. I'm not sure 100% on all that. But so having their own trolley motor, which I'm assuming is going to be a product of that relationship with motor guide. Um, will be a huge thing. So if they can have, so market the trolley motor to sell with their, their sounders when guys are going in to buy, it's going to be a huge thing for them. Now that they've got the live as well, I think that's something that we need to look at, talk about. Um, Garmin Live Scope come out. Garmin, obviously Garmin's got it. They've got the Live Scope. They don't have the trolley motor. But if, we'll talk a little bit about more of that because we've got an idea of what Garmin could possibly do to keep them in the hunt. Uh, with Lawrence live, um, that's going to be huge for them. There'll be, I'm sure, there's going to be a big, big emphasis on that this year with the trolley motor. How they incorporate that? The photos didn't really show an inbuilt transducer into the unit. Uh, the, the what the guys were talking about. No one really talked about having the transducer. They talked about a, a, a bolt-on style, and the only pictures I've seen. And it was again, it was a prototype was just your hose clamp style uh, clamp onto your shaft of the trolley motor to install your transducer. So Garmin, I might as well talk about Garmin. <clears throat> now the Garmin, obviously they don't have a, a trolley motor. Um, there's not many two, there's not too many other brands out there in trolley motors that have the quality that you would associate with a quality company like Garmin. Um, basically you've had two choices realistically. Uh, motor Guide or Minn Kota. Um, the others, there's a lot of cheap brands out there that just really don't cut the mustard. So, but the option I have for Garmin is, um, <clears throat> a while back I seen a video on YouTube, uh, a kayaker, brilliant guy, he modified a live scope transducer, bolted it onto a pole, custom built a, a bracket that come out of his kayak, so he can mount it onto his kayak railing, go over the side of the rail of the kayak and then a shaft went down which he had the transducer on which was mounted on there screwed on so it had screw mounts basically like you were mounted on the rear or something and then it had a handle with like a not a bearing style but a bearing or a handle where you could just turn around so basically what he'd done is taken a live scope transducer which is traditionally forward facing forward facing on the trolley motor but wherever you basically wherever your trolley motor is facing is where it is but if you're going up the side of a riverbank and you've got the, on the trolley motor you can't see to the left you can't, you can't swing it to the right because you have to stop then spin it or you can't keep trolling and then check on your sides by having an additional accessory that just bolts onto the side of the kayak and I believe Someone will come out with a boat, and I think that's where Yolo Tech might jump in on. It might be a new little one for Yolo Tech to get on. Uh, a custom bracket handle that you can mount a Garmin transducer on. He now has 360 degrees of live scope access. So he can basically kayak up in the middle of log timber and just sit there and just go around and check 360 degrees and see if anything's moving whatsoever. If you find something, he can then track that fish by using this handle. You can easily mount something into a rod holder that 
hangs over the side with a handle so someone can just turn it when, you, when you're just trawling along or just idling along on electric. Or there could be some sort of proper mount that goes on the side that's electrically based or controlled by the Garmin system. I think that's a good idea for Garmin and some of the other manufacturers around there. Definitely worth an option. I think I'd buy one. So, and I'm looking to get a kayak, so it'll definitely be something I'll be looking at. Um, the Hummingbird. What's Hummingbird going to do? Hummingbird and Dakota. Hummingbird, mega imaging, fantastic gear. Absolute beautiful picture. The mega imaging last year release. The big thing was the uh, Ultrax, which did really well. Um, they need a live system. I can't imagine Hummingbird turning up this year to the iCast without a lot, some sort of live version. They've been really quiet, there's been nothing on the net about it, uh, nothing on their homepage, no, no sort of hints anywhere they could find, so it's, I think it's something they've kept under the chest, but I think it'd be crazy if they didn't turn up with a live system. And it's something that, A, again, like I talked about with Lawrence, could be an inbuilt live scope system uh, in, built into their trolley motors, into the Minn Kota. Um, so it could be designed in a new one, like they did with the Mega Image, to then come back and do it on the, on the with the new lives. Yeah, so I think Hummingbird will come along and I think they're definitely alive and maybe something else to offer us. Maybe a high definition, turning our mega imaging forward and something like that. What we are, are on electronics, um, I think there's a few other options in there for our electronics companies. Um, social media is a huge thing nowadays in fishing. Pro fishermen have got four or five GoPros or um, the Garmin version, sorry, I've forgotten the name. The new DJI Osmo will be huge this year. That's going to be a huge product. Um, don't put that lightly. The front facing camera is going to be absolutely magnificent. So when the guys go bring their bass up, traditionally they, you can see them all, they just stand there and sort of look and see if it's sort of close. Now that you are going to check it and make sure they've got a good frame and that they got a good, great picture of the fish for you. <clears throat> DJI Osmo is going to be huge. That is a, going to be the fisherman's friend for the social guys. So definitely look out for that this year. As well as that, DJI needs to team up with one of these three, the big three, the Garmin, Hummingbird, or Lawrence, because we need an inbuilt system in so you DJI GoPro can stream straight to your thing and you can bring pop screens up and control the cameras from the units. I think that's the next step and it's I think it's warranted YouTube is growing exponentially, the money in YouTube's huge. Yeah, so technology wise fishing. Um, I think you might see some stands there to do with fishing sim world this year. Uh, Scott Martin announced the other day a heap of professionals have signed on to it. Um, they've all got themselves in there. Come July, there's an update to that software. I've started playing the game. It's a pretty decent game as fishing go. The last one I played was probably 15 years ago. It was pretty average. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's fishing is very hard to get that feel for fishing. Um, I'm sure there'll be some rod joystick controllers coming out uh, down the track. They are talking about doing a pro tour, so they're talking about getting some sort of fishing gaming league going, which I think is brilliant. That'll get the kids in. Um, if it's anything, if it's 5% of what Fortnite is, wow, well then you're just gonna just drag a whole generation of kids into fishing, which is fantastic. Because they don't have money, they can play it, they can get addicted to fishing which means then they go down and they want to join a comp, and they want to get a boat, they want to get a rod and reel and a can, and they're going to go fishing. Uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think Scotty Martin's got a uh, fantastic idea for him to jump on board with that. I know the Australian Carl uh, Jugerson has got his, uh, he was talking the other day online about he's got his image in there, so that's fantastic, so great, great job to him. I know there's going to be a heap of others. Okay, what else we got? Plano just announced their rust-proof boxes, the rust restricted restrictors, restrictor range. I think it is restrictor. Um, yeah, so they've taken. We've got our ones that had the little tabs, the restrict uh, rust preventative tabs in, and you can buy the separate tabs through different brands to put in with your tackle box to get rid of the rust. Well, Plano's 
up that ante, which is good. They're the big boys, um, they've created a whole box that the, uh, is, has the rust presented, prevent, preventative inside the box. So the, the actual plastic molding has that rusting in, so you never have to change it. Whatever you put in there is never going to rust, basically, is what they're saying. So quality wise, it's not like they're waterproof boxes. Um, it's a, it looks like a cheaper version. It doesn't. I don't think it's a waterproof version. I think they don't need to worry about it if it's the rust. But to be honest with you, it looked a little bit cheap, especially from Plano. They're waterproof boxes. They do a really good job. I think Lure Lock again is going to be the one to watch. I think you might uh, see that locker range expand. So um, my ideas were they're going to either have a portable version like a suitcase with wheels. So it'll fold up so you can slide under your bed or chuck it inside your lock of your boat. Um, and then fold it up and put say 10, 10, they've only got I think five in the big locker unit. Maybe a 10 unit it's, that's on wheels with a handle like an airport trolley, airport bag, a carry on piece. Um, and I think you'll see them maybe do some home stuff. Um, it's probably one segment where they sort of forget you could mount that on the wall, the lure lock system. I think you might see some more foldable racking that could be placed on the wall. They might come up with a home system. And you might also see that from Flambo and Plano. I mean, it's, it's very hard to change the boating side, but there's a whole other market there about when you get home and what you do to store your stuff. Where do you put your spare stuff? Lure wise, I think Live Target's going to continue their run. They have done a fantastic job with the lures in the 12 months. Um, I'll go, I think they're going to use that momentum to get some more and we're going to see some more range come out. Uh, definitely high quality gear. Uh, so I think they'll be doing another great job this year and I think their biggest competitor is going to be Chase Baits. I believe they're an Australian company that's expanded into the USA. Don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so. Um, they have got some really, really, really nice gear. Uh, the Rip Snorter range, uh, they just released a little um, lizard, with a, a fully lizard version. They've got um, all sorts of gear. Uh, mullets, they've got everything. Very similar range to Life Target and of the same high quality that is coming out now. They're not cheap, but they're definitely a high quality unit. And I think Chase Baits, this could be their year to come out with something special and, and maybe get a maybe get a place you know get get a best of segment somewhere. <clears throat> I think the new thing that's gonna happen this year, um, there's a million soft plastics out there. We've all seen every different variety known to man of soft plastics. And what I think this year is that taking that live target formula of creating a uh, basically exact, exact replica of a bait and putting it into a hard or a soft body, a soft plastic body, taking it next to and instead of just having your standard paddle tail plastics, you've got your, your frogs, your, your crawfish and all that. I'm talking like pitcher, exact replicas but in a soft plastic mold a one piece mold that pretty much gets that and you might have to put some hairs in it or, or some different other things that will just bolt on so like some arms or something that would clip onto it or pin onto it or something i think that's what's going to come next in the soft plastic range um and the other one is that i've, I've looked at is a company called biobait soft plastics now the Big thing with biobait soft plastics, they're a fantastic plastic. I used them in the back plastic. Um, swim fantastic, they've got a really great scent. The big seller, and it's one that's gonna be, I think we all sort of know is coming, is the environmental impact. These All these plastics that were thrown in the river and fishing with, they, if they fall off, they're basically there till the plastic dissolves, which could be anywhere up to, let's face it, depending on what it's made of, 10,000 years. Plastic bags last that long, so a plastic, baby plastic fish is probably gonna last similar if it's not designed. Biobaits has created an environmentally friendly plastic that 
once it's in water for 90 days, it'll basically dissolve. It just goes off. No toxicity into the system. If the fish swallows it, just with the water, it's just gonna dissolve and disappear. They'll wee it out or pull it out, which is fantastic for our fisheries, for the fish, and knowing that we're not destroying it. Uh, tungsten weights in the States, you've done a great job, America, for pushing tungsten weights and, the, and the, you banned lead, didn't want lead in the water. We still, lead still gets used here, uh, it's cheap, but <clears throat> I think down the track it's going to have to change. Tungsten is very environmentally, that's why we use it. Yeah, it's got benefits that it's more for its density and its weight, but environmentally wise is the main reason we've got it. So having a soft plastic that can dissolve after 90 days inside water and not harm anything, and we know it's not going to hurt the environment, well, that's just fantastic. And they're just a good bait as well. So I think buy a bait will really jump out this year at iCast. Uh, make sure you check it out. Buy a bait. Um, they're a really great company. Uh, only a small company and growing, but uh, yeah, doing some really good things and the right way about it. Shimano. <clears throat> I think Shimano is going to have a big year this year, guys. Um, I was very lucky. Uh, I got in early. I've been wait. I heard the rumours. I got in early. I contacted a Japanese company, and I was able to get the 2019 Calcutta DC, brand new. It's been six or seven years since uh, they made the last model. I think it was 2005 was the last year. The old Calcutta DC, um, which was a Japan model. I own two of those and they were two of the best reels I've ever had. Um, also got a Daiwa Roger this year. Um, and I got that first last last year and that was just awesome. What a reel, absolutely gorgeous. I used it, used it on my big sexy favorite rod this year, the Barrett Classic and just, wow. Did a block of bearing upgrade on that and it just casted like butter, absolute butter. But, and then, I didn't think something could get as good as that until I got the Calcutta DC. Uh, Shimano, wow, jeez. Unfortunately, they're not bringing it to Australia. Uh, my contacts have let me know that Shimano Australia is not, not going to bring it here. They don't think the market wants it and they don't think it's uh, needed here. Um, I think it might get put into America. It's a really small bait caster. It's not your traditional big one. Big reel like you say the old Abu 6400s and 5500s and stuff like that. It's not not that large size. Um, it's that tiny, but it is bulletproof, silky smooth, digital. Um, wow, absolutely blew my socks off. Um, shoot over, check my video out. Um, in, the, in my playlist, you'll see it there. I was the first one, I think, to get a review outside of America on it. And I fished a week this year in the Barra Classic with it. Trawling, I got the only fish I got for the week, a 63 centimeter Barra, which was awesome. Um, yeah, just absolutely beautiful reel. Um, so yeah, make sure you check it out. I'll have it up here. You can see the, see the video up here. Um, yeah, go and watch it. it Definitely worth it. I think Shimano will bring it because I think yeah. if it wasn't because of its size, anyone can use it. You can use it on any any fishery in every style, even way up to your big fish and your coastals, on your inshore stuff with that salt water. Um, it's obviously salt waterproof, <clears throat> so you can use it pretty much anywhere, but it's small enough to use on your bass as well. Um, and I think we'll also see from Shimano a new set of rods. It's been I think the Conquest, which is the best rod they sell, which is absolutely amazing. I've got one, that's what I paired up with a Calcutta. I had the Conquest on a Conquest, and <clears throat> you couldn't pick a better duo, I guarantee you that. Um, that was 2012 winner, I think, for iCast, so that's seven years since then. They haven't really released anything new. The NRX models, are, they're fantastic rods, G Loomis. Um, so you've got the G Loomis and the Shimano, they're owned by the same, uh, Shimano owns G Loomis now. I've got a funny feeling we're going to see some high-end rods coming from Shimano this year. I've just got that, that niggling feeling. 
There's been a lot of new rods coming out of Japan lately. Um, I get probably one or one video a week through my uh, Japanese YouTube channels, and they're releasing a lot of rods and some some high end stuff, um, some quality. So I wouldn't be surprised if they release an American version and, and another high quality freshwater rod uh, for the states. Maybe a maybe another NRX spec, or a new NRX or a new Conquest. I think it may be a new Conquest to suit this new Calcutta DC and bring them over and then they've got a combo. Um, if it's like that, we all know how good that Conquest is if you haven't ever tried one. It's an expensive rod. Um, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you there. The combo together, I think it is about, in America, you're probably looking at about, I think 600, so probably about 13 to 1400 dollars for the combo. So well over, easily over a thousand dollars US to buy it. If you wanted to buy it, it's nearly two grand to buy it here for us. <clears throat> but I think so. I think we'll see something big from Shimano in that regards. Um, Daiwa, they've released a new TD Black range here in Australia not long ago. So they've got a new few ranges out. That Ryoga was just fantastic. They've just released the new Stees. Um, that was that came out not long ago, so I can't see anything new uh, coming out, anything that's going to blow us off. I think they're going to be what they've released over the whole year, a whole range. They've got that Ryoga, they've got their new Stees, which they've just released, which is the I think they're going to be the one they want to sell. It's a $550 US reel, so it's a big dollar reel. Um, so I think they'll be putting a lot of emphasis in to try and sell those. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I can't see too much from Dial in that in that regards. Uh, your St. Croix and all that down and good. It's going to be a lot more movement from favorite favorite rods has jumped up. It's used the social media boom in fishing to really push hard with their uh, Guggen Guggen part owners. Those guys are really pushing it, and they do a fantastic rod. I've got a big sexy. Uh, seven footer and heavy and it's a fantastic rod. I'm so happy I bought it um, and 200 bucks can't go wrong it was a really really good rod yeah so favorite 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 rods I think will be the big big time one this year um, St. Croix will come out with some fantastic fantastic stuff yet again they got three out of three last year they got a hat trick um, I'd love to get one of them but I've got too many rods as it is but yeah, I think you'll see some good stuff out of them. Uh, but I think Shimano's gonna come out with some great stuff. Guy, we've got some great rods. Luz will, Luz will be up there. I think Luz will step up, we need to step up their game a little bit more and, and go the big time. We'll see some more out of them. That's a really tough segment to pick. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd put my money on favorite. Doing something a little bit special. They've got a really high quality stuff coming out now. And they've got a really big following. So I think they'll do really, really well. Coolers and coolers or eskies to us Aussies. Um, I think we'll see, we talked about the wheels on the Yeti Tundra from last year that won the um, fly fishing accessory. I think we'll see some more in there, uh, maybe four wheel items with tow handles and stuff like that. A few manufacturers, um, it'd be nice if you could get something that's got swivel wheels on it that can handle the dirt and the dust and stuff. So maybe something along those lines. Life vests. Let's talk life vests. I think I've got a I had a really good idea with life vests. Um, obviously, Mustang is one of the big names out there in them. Uh, they have the ones, the self-actuating ones. You can either they when they when they get wet, they self-activate, or they've got a new style um, where you get under a certain amount of pressure on the water and it activates. Um, <clears throat> boats are extremely fast nowadays. Those bass boats these guys use in the States are just out of control. 70 or 75 mile an hour on the water. Um, I don't think I'd be doing that on a daily river if I wanted to live. Um, we've got crocodiles that uh, we've got to think about. If we fall out, we're pretty much dead. So going 75, uh, 75 mile an hour is probably not really a high priority for us. Um, but you guys do, and even at slower speeds, if something does happen, Hopefully not to any of us. 
uh, and you do fall out having one of those un those um, life vests on, definitely gives you a little bit better chance of surviving. <clears throat> I think having that system that Mustang has where it sets itself off and self inflates and gets you, gets your head above water if you've been knocked out or something so you're visual and people can see you is fantastic. I think what you're going to see is more electronics coming into it. And electronics is going to come into everything we go into nowadays but I think similar to if anyone's an iPhone person and got an iWatch, um, the Series 4 iWatch, um, if you fall down, it's got a gyroscopic sensor in it. If you fall down and you're down for a period, it will ask you a question. If not, it will call emergency services for you. So if you've fallen down, knocked your head and you're unconscious, the idea is to automatically call emergency service because it could save a life. I think what you'll see in the life vests this year from maybe a, someone as big as a Mustang is maybe some sort of sensor or, or GPS or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, Blue, Bluetooth system that could uh, connect to your, either your phone or to your unit, say your Lawrence or Encoder, another one, a one boat, one network idea from Encoder, which is a brilliant idea. So something like that where your life vest talks to your sounder that then links to your phone. With technology, I, I know something can be put into your life vest that can easily connect to either your phone, an app on your phone. If you fall out, as soon as that inflates, that would then call emergency services, give them your GPS location, not of your phone, but of the actual life vest. So Coast Guard or a Ranger that could come out and go straight to your location and get you out and hopefully save your life. I think that is an essential. I think, say one of these big guys, say Mustang and all the other guys that do the life jackets, that's what they need to do and I think it could be easily done through an app or, and or even better, part of Lawrence Hummingbird Garden to connect and form a partnership. <clears throat> Partnerships in the electronics industry is going to be essential uh, over the next few years to survive because it's, you have to come out, technology changes so quick. It's a lot of money invested to change all these, being able to partner with different companies to give each other solutions to increase your market shares, definitely a good opportunity. So I think in the life vest range, I think that's a brilliant idea and I think someone needs to come up with it and, and make it happen. I don't think it's gonna cost a fortune to do it with what they've got invested in this, in, in the self-inflating ones now that can do the pressure. I'm sure it's only a little bit more to do it. So drones, I think that's gonna be another one in our electronic side that you could see the show this year and I think if you look behind me, you'll see the Spry done by Swell Pro. It's a new model that's just come out. They had the Splash Drone 1, 2, and 3. The 3 is a fantastic bit of kit. There's a lot of videos on the net about that. This Spry, I think, is going to be a bit of a game changer for the social media guys. Um, the Swell Pro 3 is a, was a self-flippable drone, so you could land in the water, 4K video underneath the water as well. You can, if it flipped over, if you had an accident and flip over, it would self ride itself, pop up, fly back and do whatever you want. Had really good images, um, so just go on YouTube and check them out. Uh, really good, really good quality coming in. Now this Spry does 70Ks an hour, so it's a high speed drone, it's 4K video, fully waterproof, it's compact, so it's a smaller version. The, the last one, the Swell, Swell Pro 3, was something like a DJI Phantom size, so it was a big unit, big to carry for your stuff. Fishing guys have got a fair bit to carry as it is. So to get something as small as, small as this to come around, um, obviously it's follow focus is, it, is another big one, and that's what I did want to talk about. Getting social media right and for these some of these big guys is, is essential. So having to not be able to control a drone when they go out, sometimes if they're by themselves, the ability just to, at the start, they pull up, whack the drone in the air, send it up, put it on follow me, and then fish. Fish, fish, flick, 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 flick. This thing's following you, wherever you're looking, it's coming around, it's gonna check you out, it's got you covered. 
Whether down the track, DJI brings out some sort of necklace with a GPS tracker. So the drone is constantly on that person when they're fishing. So whether they're going down to get a fish, the drone's gonna come around and get that, so they'll always get a good shot. That's probably gonna be something we need to see from fishing to help out with the fishing. But something like this waterproof, <clears throat> a waterproof item that can you can go and put in the water, you can go check out a snag and drop it down and see if there's any fish on there. Be, and be 200 meters away in your boat. You can go check it out, just put it there, go check a few pads out, just sit it down in the water, turn it off, let it float for a bit, see if there's any fish. Oh, yeah, fish there, right over, we'll go over there, fly back. It's got a few options there, I think. I don't think the rules would really go against it because we use electronic sounders to find fish and live scopes and all that stuff. So this is just another form of electronics to help us find the fish. You still got to catch them. So, but yeah, I think this spry could be a really big thing. And yeah, I think definitely something to watch out from, from Soil Pro. Clothing range. Another huge segment that's really, really tough to pick something for. I think you're gonna see stuff that allows, that's got some inbuilt supports for your GoPro. Uh, when I had these custom made, I, I had a hole sewn through so we could I could put my GoPro through to allow for my chest now, because you didn't want it over the top for our sponsors. Um, so I think you'll see some clothing range that'll allow maybe that's got an inbuilt flexible support where you can put a mount uh, on there so you don't have to wear those harnesses. Hats, hats that will have built in, somehow built in maybe on the top, some sort of support up the top so you can put a GoPro on. So that if you hat guys out there for Puka, for our guys at Puka that did ours, they did a fantastic job. Um, maybe something up here that you can put the GoPro on or something like that. There is a, a few hats that you can buy, a cheaper variety that um, has them out here. But I think having options is always good so I think in the clothing range you'll see a little bit more that will, again helps that social media presence. The other thing I'd like to see from the clothing is a, a tournament range. Um, I sent off a couple of emails last year to a few of the bigger companies asking about a tournament range. Do you have a say a Jason Christie performance the AFCO Jason Christie performance long sleeve hoodie awesome bit of kit but it comes in colors with prints all over now all of us that are fishing and, and fish regularly that, are, that especially the smaller guys that aren't on much money and stuff they've got to go and get shirts made up but sometimes those shirts come from China or they're cheaper they're not a high quality shirt but uh, it's the only way you can get a white one that you can get your sublimated printing put on. Why can't, the, why don't these big companies sell a tournament range? So it's got all the technology in it, but it's just white. So we can buy 10 of them, I can take them to my printer, and the printer can get all our sponsors and logos and everything put on it. We get the comfort of a high quality item, and we can look after our sponsors and look after our team. I think that's something all of them need to do. Terminal tackle, tricky one. The Tokyo rig's taken off this year, so I think we only had VMC, I think, this year had a dedicated one. I think they were the first to come out with it. I think you'll see a lot of different varieties of the Tokyo rig. It's been going really well. Being able to sit that bait up just off the bottom, so have that weight dropping down, whatever size weight you want, fold it up for that wire. Sit that there and let your bait just float just off the bottom. I think that's a great idea. Um, it's something I didn't have to try. I didn't see any, any of the shops here that I looked at, unfortunately, but I think it's something that will gain more popularity. I think there'll be a hell of a lot more of it, and the other guys will be bringing out different sort of styles and get away from the sort of things. Let's find something new in the summer. So I think you'll see, there's always something, I always think of something, but I think you'll see a lot more of the Tokyo Rig style set up or something around that. Might be called the Tokyo Rig, we call something different. Yeah, something along those lines. So there's a fair bit there, and you know, and I think 
the other one is tungsten. Like tungsten is going to expand. There's a lot of companies coming out of it. Uh, one of our, I'm a, lucky to be a pro staff member of the real tungsten team. They do some fan, fantastic stuff. They brought out their never chip range in the long year. They brought out a hub and they're expanding and they're growing bigger and bigger every month. Um, so we could you never chip so you don't lose that paint. I think there'll be a lot more of a similar sort of a setup was that. Anyway, so that's that's my 2019 crystal ball for the iCast.